this is Gamer Z, and today we'll be doing part one of the tutorial how to create an infinite runner. Now, as you can see here, I went ahead and completed, partly completed, one of the infinite runners that I'll be creating. Now, in this infinite runner, you should be able to run forward and jump onto the platforms when they appear. The platforms will be created outside of the layout so it looks as though the entire scenery is being continued while the player is running. Behind the player you have a saw or something looking like a saw. Basically what it does is move up and down using the sign behavior and if the player touches it he will die and also if the player falls off of the screen he will die. So let me go ahead and show you an example of what I mean. So as you can see, the player is able to move forward and he can jump towards the other platform. And he's able to keep up with the scenery. Alright, also what, what you must have noticed is that the platforms are moving forward. This is happening using the bullet behavior for them. And I just died. Now we're going to be able to implement all of this when the tutorial is finished. Let's go ahead and open up the blank project. Now we're going to need to create a player. So first let's go to the sprite object, name it player, Let's create that player. We're going to have to resize him to make him a bit smaller. So let's say width 20 and height 32. Let's give the player a body. And let's give him some eyes so that he can look as though he's looking over in front of him. Now that will be our player for this tutorial. Next we need to create the platforms. So let's go object, platform. And let's resize this to 96 by 32. Let's give it some color. And let's change the origin point to top left. Now, the reason we've changed the origin point is so that when we enable the snap to grid and show grid, it will be easier to place it on the screen. So let me show you what I mean. Now that it is enabled, you can see that it is a lot easier to place it around on the screen. Alright, so I'm going to go right ahead and copy this five more times. Now, we have a platform to run on and a platform to jump to when we make it to the end. Next, we're going to make the saw that is in the background. The saw was made using the tile background. So let's go ahead and name this saw. Insert. Let's resize this to 32 by 32. And let's give this a saw look to it. So, use this color here. Tear it to about there. Use the line tool and take it from about the center. And we're going to fill up this space right here. Now, it's not perfect, but it will get the job done. Now, let's decrease the size of the top background. So about here. Next, we're going to put it here and increase the size of its height. Alright. 
Now we're gonna install the behaviors for all of the objects. Starting with the player, we're gonna insert the behavior platform. Sorry, let me go ahead and delete that. Platform. Right? And for the platforms, we're gonna go ahead and insert the behavior solid and bullet. We made it solid so that the player can land on top of it and the bullet so that it can move. For the saw, we're gonna insert a behavior sign. Now let's edit the properties for the behavior. For the player, we're going to change the speed to about 255. And his jump strength to about 400. And then we're going to enable double jump. Next, for the platform, we're going to go ahead and say speed 250. We made it slower so that the player can keep up with the movement of the screen so that it doesn't fall back and die. Alright, so now we're gonna say set angle to no. This is so that when we set the motion, the angle of motion, it doesn't spin the platforms around. So let's go ahead and see what this looks like. Oh wait, let's go ahead and change the properties for the sign movement. So here we're going to set this to vertical and the period to 1, magnitude to 20. Let's go ahead and see what this looks like. Alright, so the player is able to land on the platforms because it's solid and the platforms are indeed moving but it's moving in the wrong direction. The saw right here is moving perfectly fine using the sign movement. But let's go ahead and fix the movement for the platforms. So first, let's go to the event sheet. And let's first let's go ahead and insert a variable and we're going to use this variable to control the movement of the layout all right so it's let's call it player alive and I set that to one to state that the player is alive all right now let's go to system compare variable and say player alive equal to one Set platform angle of motion to 180. That is setting it in the opposite direction of what it was going originally. Right now, we're going to add a sub event and say player is on floor player. Simulate control right now this will check to see if first is the player alive and if the player is alive is the player on the floor now once all of this checks out the player can then move forward we use the player on floor event so that when the player jumps he's not moving forward because that would make it a lot harder or a lot difficult for anybody that's playing the game. So let's go ahead and see what this looks like. And there you have it, the player is able to move and jump onto the platforms which are going in the opposite direction. And that will be the end of part one of today's tutorial. What we have accomplished is the player being able to move forward 
the platform moving in the opposite direction and the saw to be moving up and down to simulate something deadly so that the player doesn't want to touch it. Alright, in the next tutorial, we will be implementing events that allows the player to interact with the saw so that if he touches it, he will die. And if he falls off the screen, he will also die. Also, for the platforms, we'll be implementing events that make it spawn randomly while off screen in random locations. Thank you for watching today's tutorial. This is GamerZ. Don't forget to subscribe.